From a cringy, low-tier soap opera to a trash TV classic, these are Taylor Kinney's worst roles revealed. For the last decade, Taylor Kinney has had an incredibly successful run on the acclaimed procedural drama Chicago Fire. His role of Lieutenant Kelly Severide has made him a fan favorite, and his departure from the series left a huge impact on the show. Kinney is a pretty experienced actor now, but like everyone, he had to start somewhere. And sometimes those early roles aren't always going to be the best. Although he has appeared in some acclaimed projects like the Oscar-winning Zero Dark Thirty, not all of his roles have been prestigious. Taylor's first major role was in the nighttime soap opera Fashion House back in 2006. The series focused on greed, lust, and ambition surrounding a corporate takeover of a fashion design firm. Taylor played the role of Luke Gianni. His mother, Maria, is the wealthy owner of House of Gianni, a fashion design firm in Los Angeles. Unlike his mother, Luke is an honest soul, often disapproving of his mother's conniving schemes. He is an aspiring artist and the love interest of Michelle Miller, one of his mother's new designers. Now, there's no real way around it. The show is pretty bad. The show really tries too hard to be cleverer than it is. Pretty much every aspect of the show has been panned. From the writing to the performances, all of it is just a train wreck. It's pretty clear from Taylor's performance that he is doing what he is told. Or, at the very least, matching the tone of the show. Seriously, the actor is so bad it's kind of amazing. Many fans of the show actually wonder whether or not it's intentionally meant to be that terrible. From beginning to end, the whole thing is a disaster that you can't look away from. Taylor starred in 35 episodes of the series and it's just awful to watch. But hey, everyone has got to start somewhere, right? From there, he landed a main role in the short-lived medical drama, Trauma. Taylor played the role of Glenn Morrison, a new EMT and a group of paramedics. Trauma only lasted a single season on NBC, after which it was canceled due to low ratings. Unfortunately for Taylor, the low viewership was also met with some pretty cold responses from audiences. A lot of people felt that the show wasn't really able to decide on its tone. Sometimes it was an intense, high-stakes drama, other times it was a light-hearted look at emergency workers. Now, there's nothing wrong with having both of those aspects in your series, but it can be pretty hard to balance out that tone. Taylor and the rest of the cast received a decent amount of praise for their performances, and a few viewers felt that the strength of the ensemble might have been enough to keep the show afloat. Unfortunately, NBC didn't seem too keen on taking a chance and chose not to resuscitate the series at the end of the first season. Now Taylor's career isn't just limited to disappointing television, he has appeared in several disappointing films too. One such disaster was 2014's The Other Woman, starring Cameron Diaz, Leslie Mann, and Kate Upton. The film centers around three women who discover they are all romantically involved with the same man. After finding out about each other, the trio take their revenge on him, Taylor plays Phil Hampton, the brother of Leslie Mann's character who ends up falling in love with Carly played by Cameron Diaz. The movie had a pretty talented cast behind it, but many felt the script relied too much on cheap laughs. It was a pretty solid box office success, making $200 million off its modest $40 million budget. But the movie was critically panned. This, aside from his minor role in Zero Dark Thirty, was Taylor's most widely released movie which really tells you a lot about how well his career on the big screen is going. In 2016, he starred opposite Natalie Dormer in the supernatural horror film, The Forest. Taylor plays a reporter named Aiden who is helping Sarah, played by Natalie Dormer, to search for her sister who went missing in a Japanese forest. At least this time, Taylor had a really sizable role, but the movie didn't really give him anything to do or any real motivation or character. Once again, in what is becoming a recurring theme for Taylor, his and Natalie's performances were singled out as okay, but the movie on the whole was really let down by the writing. Unfortunately for The Forest, it just really isn't that scary, which is a pretty bad sign for a horror film. It also didn't help the movie's box office returns that it received its limited theatrical release the same weekend as The Revenant and Star Wars The Force Awakens. His most recent outing on the big screen was in the 2018 film Here and Now. The movie stars Sarah Jessica Parker as Vivienne, a singer who is diagnosed with glioblastoma, an aggressive kind of brain cancer. 
The movie was shot in just 16 days, which is wickedly fast. Criticisms were aimed at the writing and the direction, but Taylor and Sarah were acknowledged for doing the best they could with the material. The box office returnings were almost non-existent, earning only $14,000 in its theatrical release. Yikes. Now that's a bomb. It's been a while since then, but it doesn't look like Taylor is likely to turn to the silver screen in any major capacity anytime soon. Taylor landed himself a recurring role in the trash classic The Vampire Diaries. He appears as Mason Lockwood in seasons two and three. Mason was a werewolf who had a relationship with Catherine Pierce, a witch who turned out to just be using him for her own ends. Now, The Vampire Diaries is a bit of a darling in the so bad it's good world, so it's pretty sad to say that Taylor kind of fit the series like a glove. His character was seen as the quintessentially cool jock type, but he also had the whole beast within thing going for him as well. Look. It wasn't really that great, but it was fun. I really don't have time to delve into the messy and complicated world of the show. And that's mainly because Mason didn't really have a lot to do except be intermittently hunky and edgy. The biggest complaint that can be said about Taylor's character was that he was kind of killed off for no real reason. Mason gets his heart ripped out, literally, at the end of season two, but it doesn't really have all that much effect on the plot. He then does get the opportunity to return as a ghost and haunt his killer in the third season. But honestly, it was too little, too late. It really felt like the writers realized that they had messed up his character after they had killed him, which I guess is something. But it doesn't really elevate his appearance on the show, and his death barely had an impact on the story at all. It's entirely possible that he left the Vampire Diaries in order to start work on Chicago Fire, which started airing in 2012. The timeline matches up at least, which might explain the abrupt departure. Either way, it's nice that he found himself a nice gig after a pretty boring one. Thankfully, Chicago Fire has been an incredible success for Taylor. He has so far appeared in 231 episodes as Lieutenant Kelly Severide of Firehouse 51. He has also had the opportunity to guest star in Chicago PD and Chicago Med. Currently, Taylor is taking an indefinite break from acting due to personal reasons, and it is really unclear as to whether or not he will ever return to Chicago Fire. Taylor has always been an incredibly reserved person when it comes to his personal life, so it is unlikely we will ever hear what has happened unless he decides to open up about it. Currently, his Chicago Fire character's fate is unknown, with Kelly said to be MIA in the most recent season finale. It's likely this was done in order to set up Taylor's disappearance from the series while still giving his character room to return if he chooses to come back. Despite some not-so-great projects, Taylor has built himself a loyal fan base who no doubt wish him all the best. So there you have it. From a cringy low-tier soap opera to a trash TV classic, those were Taylor Kinney's worst roles. 